Welcome, friends, to Ted Ross Ministries for Christ the King Sunday, November 24th, 2024. Let us pray. We give thanks to your Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son. You have protected us through the night from all danger and harm. We ask you to preserve and keep us this day also from all sin and evil, that in all of our thoughts, words, and deeds we may serve and please you. Into your hands we commend our body and soul and all that is ours. Let your holy angels take charge of us, that the wicked one had no power over us. Amen. Our first reading for today is from Daniel chapter 7. As I watched, thrones were set in place, and an ancient one took his throne. His clothing was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was fiery flames, and its wheels were burning fire. A stream of fire issued and flowed out from his presence. A thousand thousands served him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood attending him. The court sat in judgment, and the books were open. As I watched in the night visions, I saw one like a human being, or son of man, coming down with the clouds of heaven. And he came to the Ancient One, and was presented before him. To him was given dominion, glory, and kingship, that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not pass away, and his kingship is one that shall never be destroyed. Here ends the reading. A second reading is from the book of Revelation, chapter 1. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of all kings on the earth. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, Christ is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account, all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Our Gospel lesson from chapter 18 of John. Pilate entered the headquarters again and summons Jesus and asked him, Are you the King of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own? Or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done, Jesus? Jesus answered Pilate, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate then asked Jesus, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king? For this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Here ends the Gospel lesson. Please sing with me our first song, Christ is the King. Oh 
Friends, I'm so glad that you're tuning in today to a message from God's Word and sing some of the great hymns on this beautiful Christ the King Sunday, 2024. The Gospel reading for this very special Festival Sunday is from John 18, 33-37. I read it for you earlier. Here in this text, the story of Jesus and Pilate presents two very different ways of exercising power. The first way, Pilate's way, is through force. Second way is Christ's way through love. Thinking about the history of God's people in the Bible, even after Israel had suffered for years under some very poor and terrible kings who did awful things, the people still long for a true king to set things right. The ideal king in the people's minds in biblical days would have the king's title of the Anointed One or Messiah. This hoped for king would be the one like a son of man, given power and dominion in the vision of Daniel chapter 7 I read for you earlier. Our Lord Jesus is given these titles even though Jesus is nothing like our earthly kings and leaders. Our Lord's authority comes from the truth through which he bears witness. Those people who recognize the truth will voluntarily and gladly listen and follow Jesus. Christ the King Sunday, which we celebrate today, celebrates the glorious and gentle rule of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. We all look forward to that day Christ has given dominion, knowing Christ's victory will be the nonviolent victory of love. Some have interpreted our Lord's statement, my kingdom is not from this world, in John 18, 36, to mean that Jesus promises good things only in some distant future, perhaps in heaven, as if we need not worry about justice or poverty or righteousness right now in this life. However, in his teachings and in his actions in the Holy Scriptures, Jesus clearly cared very much about the here and now of this world that you and I are living in. Think about, for example, the Lord's Prayer. When we pray, Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We are, of course, praying for God's will in this world, the only home and society we really know. So what does it look like for God's will to be done on earth? What does it look like for God's will to be done in your life, in my life? What does it look like for God's will to be done in your family or in your church or some other setting? I'm sure that Jesus disappointed some of his followers because they wanted a revolutionary leader who could do political and military things. Throughout history, revolutions and leaders come and go. You know many of the famous ones. The poor and others who are on the bottom get to be on the top for a little while. But inevitably, we are stuck with some old concentration of power in high places. Insiders versus outsiders. The haves versus the have-nots. People with plenty of money, but also people with very little money or very little of anything. The names and the titles change, but the system does not. Life simply is not fair and nice in the real world. Think about then the unusual life, ministry, and death of Jesus Christ. No one compares to Christ the King. That's why he is our king, and that's why we celebrate him on this festival Sunday. 
By normal standards of a political revolution, Jesus' execution meant to many that he was a total failure. But our Lord Jesus Christ embodied a new and different kind of power. Jesus shows us a truth larger and deeper and ultimately stronger than any human or political revolution. Yes, in Christ's love, his miracles, his preaching, his suffering and crucifixion, his death and glorious resurrection, in all these things, Jesus jammed up the whole system that keeps cycling back around to perpetuate violence and sin and retribution, dishonesty, inequity, and exclusion. Please listen to these verses from our gospel lesson, John 18, 36 and 37. Jesus says, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate then asked Jesus, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say, I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. So Pilate asked Jesus a straightforward question in our text, and Jesus, Jesus answered the question clearly. Jesus is a king, but one whose kingdom is not of this world. I believe there is no question in Pilate's mind that Jesus spoke the truth and was innocent of any crime. But it is also apparent that while recognizing the truth, Pilate chose to reject the truth. It is a tragedy when any of us recognize the truth but fail to heed it. I believe Pilate was cynical about Jesus. He thought that all truth was relative. To many government leaders, truth was whatever the majority of people agreed with or whatever helped advance their own personal power and political goals. When there is no basis for truth, there is no basis for moral right and wrong. So what happens to justice then? Justice becomes whatever works or whatever helps those in power who are often the very rich. But when we follow Jesus, the Christ and head of the church, when we follow him as his disciple, we obey him, we obey his word, we try to live his way. In his word and commandment to love, we have a standard for truth, life, and for our moral behavior. Remember, my friend, Jesus loves everyone. Jesus loves you more than any political party or leader. Jesus really cares about your life, and only on this earth, but your life for eternity. Jesus cares about your future. Through Jesus, the kingdom of God breaks in amid the old earthly kingdoms that rise and fall, rise and fall, bringing a new reign of love, forgiveness, and peace. We who are in the church today long to break free from the old cycles of worldly power. Therefore, we continue to worship today the real King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We continue to pray for God's kingdom to come into our hearts, into our homes, into our denominations, into our country and world. And we pray and work for renewal that's deeper and more lasting than any political movement. And we continue to work and pray for a world where all of God's precious children and God's beautiful creation are treated with respect, justice, and love. Amen. We continue with the next song. The 
Continue with today's prayers. My petitions will end with the words, Merciful God, your response is, Receive our prayer. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Return to God in prayer. So rooted in God's abundant love for the whole world, we pray today for our neighbors, the church, and all of creation. Revive our congregations synods and national church body to reflect the love, justice, and kinship of your kingdom. Raise up diverse leaders who teach and serve your people. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Nourish parched lands and bring relief to flooded places, especially bless those struggling in Florida and North Carolina. Protect wildlife habitats and endangered species that the chorus of creation's praise resounds with joy. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Grant wisdom to leaders who govern, legislate, and deliberate on our behalf. Advance your nonviolent reign of justice, seeking love through work. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Draw near to our family members or friends who are detained, on trial, incarcerated, Transform systems of retribution into systems of reconciliation and restoration. Empower activists who advocate for change. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Remind us of your enduring love in all seasons. Guide the planning efforts of worship leaders and volunteers who usher our congregations into a meaningful Thanksgiving and Advent season. We pray also for any in our family or people we know who may be sick or suffering or dying. Bring them healing, strength, and encouragement. Merciful God, receive our prayer. In your eternal presence, the saints sing of your majesty. Join our forces with theirs in praise to the one who loves us and frees us from sin. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We offer these prayers to you, gracious God, trusting in your boundless love for all you've made through Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed it be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, and forgive us those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our closing song is now Thank We All Our God. Please sing it with me.
forgiveness and love and future that Jesus Christ offers. Go now in peace. Follow Jesus, Christ the King. Thanks be to God.